Great Debaters Contest is powered by Blaze, by Safaricom, the Youth Network. Ladies and gentlemen, basking in the rare Nyeri sun, this is the Great Debaters Contest and I am your host, Austin Nyombok. And I am Mariam Bishar. Welcome to the show. We have Bishop Gatimu Gandu girls going versus Nyeri High School in a very old rivalry. And they're debating on whether developing nations should adopt policies that heavily disincentivize urbanization. We'll have them take the stage now. Proposal number one, you have three minutes. I am a lover. Yes, I am a lover. And in fact, I happen to be deeply, no, madly in love right now. I believe the correct terminology is that I am head over heels. Now this is the part where all of you say, aww. Aww. I am madly in love with humanity. And I want nothing, and I mean nothing, but the best for all of humanity. Now my name is Smith Muhuri from the one and only Nyeri High School, here to propose the motion that states that developing countries should adopt economic development policies that heavily disincentive urbanization. Now, developing countries are basically countries that heavily rely on foreign aids to be able to sustain their economy. Now, economic development policies are laws set by the government to ensure that the economy of a country is boosted. To disincentive is to discourage or to regulate something. And urbanization is the growth and development of towns. Now, before I start, I want to clarify one thing. We are not trying to tell you that urbanization is the enemy. Do not get us wrong. We are just trying to tell you that urbanization is not the best way to ensure economic development in developing countries. Now, I want all of you to imagine a perfect world where everything is amazing, where Nairobi is Nairobi, where Johannesburg is Johannesburg, and where New Delhi is still New Delhi. I also want you to imagine that there are rural areas in all these countries, and yet economic development is over the peak, over the top. This is more than possible, and it is possible due to one policy, and that is the Great Diffusion Policy. This policy basically entails that uh, social amenities should be well distributed throughout the countries, not by developing, but just making sure that everyone can access the basic things. Now, according to research done by the United Nations from the 21st of June to the 21st of July 2016, it stated that most urban centers in developing countries are under risk of failure. Now, this is against the Sustainable Development Goal number 11, which states that we should ensure that our cities are sustainable and we should have sustainable communities. Now, aren't you tired of collapsing buildings, collapsing infrastructure? I believe you all remember the Huruma incident, that is. Aren't you tired of flooding cities? Aren't you tired of waking up at 4 a.m. to go to Nairobi using the th th thicker superhighway, I mean? Aren't you tired of paying over inflated prices for basic commodities like food? Now, China is the second greatest economy in the world, and yet it has rural areas. Now, by opposing this, you shall simply be telling us that, yes, we want overpopulation. Yes, we want unemployment. Yes, we want all these negative things. But I want to tell you one thing, that the sun might be shining outside there, but winter is coming. Thank you. Okay, ladies, you have three minutes for your opening statements. Whenever and wherever societies have flourished and prospered, rather than stagnated, decayed, and declined, creative and workable cities have been at the core of this phenomena. Our Fani Harej Keruba from Bishop Gati Mugandu here to strongly oppose the motion that states developing countries should de should adopt economic development policies that heavily disincentive urbanization. Developing countries, these are countries whose focus on economies, economic, economically based is on agriculture. Economic development policies, these are plans of actions aimed at creating wealth, developing industries and trade. Industrialized urbanization. This is the movement of people from a rural setting to an urban setting. Urbanization has, to, has proved to have enormous blessing, to be an enormous blessing, to have very many advantages. In urban centers, we have access to health facilities. These are wonderful social amenities. We also get access to recreational facilities. We also get very Good job, job opportunities in these urban centers. Let us work 
on developing urban centers instead of working to scrap them out. Urban centers. We need policies to improve these urban centers. Which policies should we implement? We have policies such as improving on our education center sector and encouraging the young people to pursue business-oriented courses. Let us think, Blaze. I am so grateful to Blaze for giving young people the opportunity to become entrepreneurs. In the past, people lived, used to leave the tertiary institutions looking for jobs. If we decided to encourage these people to pursue business-oriented courses, when these people will be leaving these tertiary institutions, they will be going out to create jobs. People, I believe this policy is awesome to solve the problem of unemployment. People, Tal Daniel Ndambuki, AKA Churchill, talent development is another great policy that we should put in place. We need to focus on talent. Ta Churchill has employed very many young people and in, in himself, he is a millionaire. People, we need to encourage talent. It's an awesome policy. I have three eyes, and I hope you can see through them. Infrastructure. Infrastructure is a great way of improving our economy. Through infrastructure, we will be able to move the raw materials from the rural areas to the urban areas. People, we need to work on improving urbanization. I rest my case. Okay, cross-examinations now. We'll begin with a gentleman. You have three minutes. Ladies and gentlemen, greatness is not for the great, and no single great man was handed greatness. It's all about your personal will fight. My name is Mike Marty from the base of the hill, near high school where the sun shines every morning, and today I'm offering myself as a servant to be whipped and beaten by these intelligent ladies because I will accept one key thing. Urbanization is good. It creates jobs. It does this and that. I choose to call it magnificent. Let us also not forget that in the 17th century, to rape and rive was considered magnificent. Let us also not forget that in the early times, to kill for sport was considered magnificent. Something is breaking my heart today, that when I read the research carried out by the IMF under the UN under 21 June to 21 July of 2016, what do I see? I see something telling me 62.4% of women in urban areas lack jobs simply because they are women. I am being heartbroken because these beautiful, intelligent ladies in 10 years' time will lack jobs because of urbanization, not because of their capabilities, but because of their gender. My heart breaks because I love them so much and I want the best for them. But because they support urbanization. For so long, they will be suppressed by this urbanization. My heart is breaking when I look at an urban area suffering from problems of poverty. Let us not forget that is under the SDG number one. I see an urban area suffering from zero hunger, yet what our policy is, the great diffusion policy that states that wherever you are, you supply to those who do not have. If people in rural, urban, in rural areas are migrating to urban areas simply because of jobs, let us create jobs to them. They do not, come, they do not need to come to us looking for Churchill to give them jobs. We need to give them that ultimate chance to grow themselves because a country is grown by its own development because let's go to China for a minute. 
China is the second de most developed economy. It's not Beijing, it's China. It's not Macau, it's China. Which simply means that every area is contributing to the economy of China. And that's what we want as the proposers of this motion, the Great Diffusion Policy. We give them jobs. They don't need to come to us looking for jobs. And ladies and gentlemen, if you dispose this policy, winter is coming. Stand up and rise and say, winter is coming. Three seats are here for you. We are gentlemen. And if you don't want to do that, then all I'll tell you is, winter is coming. I rest my case. Okay, ladies, let's hear your rebuttal. You have three minutes. Sutton. Absent, sir. Sifunjo. Present, sir. From Bishop Gatimugandu, my name is Vanessa Sifunjo. And mine today is to strongly oppose this very interesting motion that states that developing countries should adopt economic development policies that disincentive, disincentive, they do not support urbanization. And I just sit back and wonder, what are we, what are we talking about? That's why I'm here today. Though sanity is absent, Sifunjo is here to guide you through. Allow me. You talk of them saying, oh, believe you me, beautiful ladies, I've seen ladies saying, oh, and they still end up in courts failing, filing for divorces. So please allow yourself to be intelligent enough. You speak of overpopulation. Thank you very much. I do not stand here to say that urbanization is the all perfect, all glory thing we need, or maybe policy we need to develop this country. But I ask you, you say in 10 years time, us, these lovely ladies, lovely ladies will be unemployed. And I, how could you just allow him say that? That's a wrong, it's not even supposed to be allowed. For crying out loud, in 10 years time, if you know very well, that you have 10 children, you cannot sustain them with your income, then why do you go ahead with the rampant awareness creation through mass media, print media, you're told about family, family planning method, you, you, methods, you're told about you know, legal constraints on the number of children a family should have, yet to still go ahead and improve the fertility rate of the country. Is it fair? We are trying to blame urbanization for our jobless states. But I ask you, joblessness comes because the number of jobs available cannot sustain the number of people looking for the jobs. But the number of people looking for the jobs, again, leads, it gives, leads us to an, a, a situation where we have overpopulation. Why are we having overpopulation? Simply because the developing countries have totally refused, or if not totally, almost totally refused, to adapt to these measures to control population. If we can control population from the base level, there's no need to argue in the future that we won't have enough jobs. Moreover, at some point, we need to develop our population. We need to increase it. Can you imagine a situation whereby we have the resources? Or we do not have people who are able to exploit them. We have an optimum population, which is okay. We'll be able to handle and tackle our things fair and square. If we have overpopulation, <laughs> please, urbanization has nothing to do with it. You talk of unemployment. Where have we left, I ask you, where did we leave comparative advantage? You know, you're assuming that we want all of them to move from rural areas to urban areas. No. We're just saying the country should employ a policy whereby we have people or maybe specialization of industries. If you're farming, if you're good in farming, stay farm. Let me be the person to let me be the person to process your tea. I do not stick out or pretend to have a good thesis or submission or treasure a good thesis. But I tell you one thing. Logistics, they say, do I say. I don't believe in theoretical progression. Francis Mbuga, betrayal in the city. Thank you very much. Thank you very much to the audience. The proposers have been asked uh, to give us examples of policies that would discourage urbanization. And the opposition claimed that the, there is no correlation between population growth, overpopulation, and urbanization. They've been asked to expound on that. We'll have them respond now. Third proposer, you have three minutes. Developing countries should adopt economic development policies which heavily disincentive urbanization. Gentlemen, I have one answer for you. 
winter is coming. Ladies and gentlemen, in front of you today is Ian Scott Nzangi, and I'm going to straight to state strong pro propositional facts as far as the motion is concerned. And I'm going to start with words from my mother. My mother tells me that since birth, we are taught how to use our hands to write. We are taught how to use our eyes to read. But there's no particular curriculum, gentlemen, in which you'll ever be taught how to use your ears to listen. What have been my fellow colleagues doing here? They've been stating policies Policies such as our brainchild, Great Diffusion Policy. What part of the Great Diffusion Policy didn't you understand? We are taking social amenities from cities and we are trying to take these amenities into the rural areas. Why should we have that health care? You say that urban areas, they have better health care. We accept, yes, they have the health care. But why the health care? Yet in rural areas, people are dying. Why should we go by that? According to the another policy for you, gentlemen, research and innovation policy, according to the Global Competitive Competitiveness Report, rather, 2015-2016, page 179, just if need be, go confirm. Germany was the fifth out of 140 countries which is developed. And when Angela Merkel was asked, she's the chancellor of Germany, what do you owe this to? She said, I owe this to the fact that Germany has decided to innovate in its rural areas. Do you understand? According to Investopedia, Investopedia, they say that China, as my friend has explained, is the second most developed country. But China has the, to, to, to get where it has, it has had to employ some policies. Policies such as, such as they are against urbanization. Cities such as Hong Kong and Macau, you're not allowed to go into those cities. They've blocked people from entering into those cities. Do you think whoever came up with that idea was stupid? They were wise, very wise. If they can guide a country to becoming the country with the second best economy. If you are a reader of newspapers, then you should be knowing on that on page 50 of the Standard Nation, May 17, 2017, Greece, Athens, they are on strike. Youths, 48%, they lack jobs because of that. When Alexis Triplas, who is the Prime Minister of Greece, was asked, what do you say? What do you have to say about this? He said that, I acknowledge that the only way out, the only solution that is remaining is to get jobs to the rural areas. I support you, and I'm a great lover, a great lover of literature. I love Francis Mbuga. What a master, what a guru of art and language. And Francis Mbuga, the main problem he, he, he tries to explain in his books, all of them, Man of Kafira, Betrayal in the City, all of the books, is lack of jobs. Lack of jobs. Rural areas, Greece, I've mentioned 48%. What do you understand? So ladies, I'm a gentleman, and I'm going to help you carry the seats across, or else you could just come by yourself. You're welcome, and thank you. Ladies, you may respond, you have three minutes. If I speak with human eloquence, an angelic ecstasy, but I'm out to kill a great mind, I am nothing but the creaking sound of a rusty gate. Gladys Modoni, Bishop Gatim Gandugals, strongly opposing the motion that states, developing countries should adopt economic policies that disincentive urbanization. A question was raised, how is a overpopulation not connected to, industrialize, uh, to urbanization? It's true, with urbanization comes overpopulation, but there is a solution to every single problem. Let us adopt and put in place the right policies to control population growth. Already, the government of Kenya has invested in creating awareness as far as family planning is concerned. It takes great courage to come in front of an audience and literally lie to us in front of our faces. For your information, China is not a developed country. It is a developing country. I have three eyes and I hope you can see through them. Industrialization. Industrialization cannot be considered a luxury, but a necessity for economic growth of any nation. This was said by Nkosozama Zuma when she took office as the chair of the African Union in 2013. Take a look at a city like Dubai. It literally lies on an island. It literally lies on a desert, sorry. But look at how far it has come. 
land reclamation policy. This is what we should adopt in order to make sure the urbanization brings on. It boasts of the world's largest mall, Dubai Mall, worth 3.4 trillion Kenyan shillings, an approximate of Kenya's budget, according to http www.worldeconomyco.ke. It also boasts of the world's largest building, Burj Khalif. And look at us. We are here sitting, just waiting, depending on meaningless things. Yet we have the minds, we have the abilities to come up with great ways of developing not just our country, but the whole world at large. Mauritius. Mauritius is one of Africa's most prosperous and stable nations. However, according to Amazon.com, in 1961, this Indian Ocean nation was, rely, was entirely reliant on sugar as, the, its, as its point of production. And it was highly affected by wealth, by weather and price fluctuations. Eventually, in 1976, they decided enough was enough and took to industrialization to make themselves grow. Great minds are capable of the greatest vices as well as of the greatest virtues. Be a great mind, make the right choice, but don't kill the great mind. Thank you. Thank you. We'll hear final statements now. Nyeri Hai, you have a minute. We've sat down and listened to webs of misunderstanding. They are saying urbanization is not perfect and they're offering solutions. The same solutions we offered through the diffusion theory policy that we're stating, giving and giving. First of all, nobody said China was a developed country. We simply said it was the second best economy in the world and we should follow what it does so that we can improve our policies. Our country needs us to stand and fight against the winter they are bringing. The winter of lies. The winter that I am so against. The winter which they are saying, let us solve problems with the same methods we are offering. Are they serious? Winter is coming. Today I want you wherever you go to remember that if we do not heavily disincentivate Type urbanization, winter will come. Winter is coming if we do not empower the rural areas to gain maximum mileage. Winter is coming if we do not believe in ourselves. Say it all. Winter is. Ladies, you have one minute for your final statement. Pretty, pretty, pretty good weather forecast we have in the house. A round of applause. GDC for SDG, BG for SDG, Bishop Gatimu for Sustainable Development Goals. Number nine, we have three I's, innovation, industry, infrastructure. And as we see, it's almost as if Judge Maina, you, you had the same you know, thought with us, which we really appreciate. Right. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Sure enough, you can see through our three eyes. But I tell you, urbanization has demerits. Fine. We're not here to, to say it's totally perfect. It's okay. But hey, the first step to success is to embrace your weakness. Embrace that urbanization. Fine, it's not that good. But come on, everything has a disadvantage. And an advantage depends on how you bring it out. And I can tell you today, don't come up with ways of discouraging or disincentive or making or, or dis or don't come up with ways of discouraging it. Instead, come up with ways to better the long fight against it. Thank you very much. When the debate is, is well done and well debated, sometimes judges have little to say because they have little to cut off from the debaters. That simply means that the two teams are wonderful. When it comes to the style and presentation, all of you are wonderful debaters, mastery of language as well. We couldn't get things to write down out of that. Uh, your passion and conviction as well was all standard and coherency of argument. What then we can now look at is how you delivered it and your mastery of topic. 
And because of that, then we have to judge. But I want to congratulate both of you. This has been a very wonderful debate. Let's just wait for the results. A great debate it was, uh, like it had been predicted, a battle of the titans, uh, which brought a lot of life to uh, the debate today. Uh, both teams are excellent in your presentations and also well-researched points. I think I really admired that, that we are not just saying this and that. Uh, we had citations for that. Uh, enough evidence to support uh, what you are saying. Uh, I am a lover of literature, and I love the way we are able to quote uh, from literary texts, uh, meaning that we are reading whatever is there in those books, and we are able to relate it to issues that affect our society, which is uh, something good and commendable. Uh, Mike from uh, Nyeri High, I love the way you use gestures and your stage presence. Uh, you are very emphatic, I almost get, got carried over. Uh, Smith, you said you are passionate, and I think I saw that passion in your presentation. Uh, Ian Scott, uh, you are also a very strong uh, debater. Uh, Vanessa, I love your conversational style of presentation. Uh, almost felt like we are engaging in some kind of a conversation with you, uh, which is good. Uh, by and by, uh, both teams have done the motion uh, great justice, and I wish, I wish to wish uh, the best team all the best. Do, 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 do. Okay, audience, as always, I don't feel like I'm qualified enough to decide which team results I should read first. So, Nyeri Hai or Bishop Gatimu Gandu? I didn't get a clear answer. Nyeri Hai or Bishop Gatimu Gandu? I hear a lot of bishops, so I'll start there. Okay, Bishop Gatimu Gandu, the judges awarded you 73%. Please give them a huge round of applause. <laughs> now, for the moment we wait for with bated breath, Nyeri High School, the judges awarded you 76%, making you the winner. A big congratulations to the two teams on stage. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. We'd like to congratulate the teams on stage and our studio audience and also our viewers back home for keeping it locked in. A big shout out to our sponsors, Safaricom Blaze, and urge you to stay tuned. I am Austin Yombok. I am Mariam Bishar. Thank you for watching. The Great Debaters Contest is powered by Blaze by Safaricom, the Youth Network.